Well, hey y'all, and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. It's been kind of a crummy week with lots of rain, uh, so I didn't get much done in the garden, uh, including yesterday, Saturday. And this coming week is lots of rain as well. But today was beautiful, even though it started off really cold this morning. So I went ahead and picked up the tree, the Kusa dogwood that I bought almost a month ago from Grandma's Gardens. And I got it planted out today, and it was a beast. And so it was a ball and burlap tree. <laughs> Those trees always look smaller, uh, the root balls anyway, do at the nursery than they do when you get it home. And so it took a really long time, like hours and hours of me digging and prepping uh, to get the hole ready over here to put the, the root ball in. And so I'm going to show you what it looks like now. You can see it back here in the back, but I think it's actually going to fit this space really nice. The soil is still behind it for now. I did not have enough energy to get and clean that up today. That'll have to be a coming uh, project, but I'm going to move around a little bit so you can see kind of its structure here. I think it is perfect for the space and so it's going to get you know maybe 15 foot wide and so there's plenty of area to the house and it can spill over as far this way as it needs to um, but I did kind of plant it with the barest side toward the back here so these are much smaller limbs in this area and I could prune these out or trim them down if I needed to so I'm really happy with how it looks um, for those of you who are always looking at my soil when I plant it and tell you I have clay soil, I don't think I've planted anything this large on my channel before, but this is what I have to deal with. So you can see it here in the shade a little better, but this is just like pure clay. And so what I did was I dug the hole here. I've already hooked up the drip or replaced the drip that I had to dig around. So future Matthew here, I was editing this video and I realized I forgot to talk about an important, um, topic about how I specifically planted this tree. Of course you want to dig a really big hole as deep as the root ball is and wider than the root ball. Some people say twice as wide. Uh, with my heavy clay soil I don't tend to end up making it twice as wide. You can imagine how much soil that would be. But also there's two schools of thought or basically two schools of thought on um, what to do with the root ball. So ball and burlap trees come with typically uh, the burlap obviously and sometimes and a lot of times a wire cage attached to that and so one school of thought says you know just plant the tree as you receive it cage burlap and all and that the burlap will break down over time uh, and the other school of thought which isn't done as often is to remove both the cage and the burlap you could of course remove one and not the other maybe uh, i am of the school of thought of removing both the cage and the burlap. I have removed shrubs in our neighborhood that was planted with burlap around them and the burlap still existed 15 years later and I can put a picture on the screen of that. I have removed a dead crab apple tree that was planted between my and my neighbor's property and the wire cage was still very much in the ground and I don't know if that had anything to do with the death of the tree or not. I mentioned I don't love crab apples on my channel and that's one of the reasons. So it may have been the wire cage that didn't allow it to thrive and root out well or cause interference with the root growth uh, or it could have just been that it was a bad variety of crab apple. But nonetheless, our experiences shape uh, how we garden and I've had both bad experiences leaving burlap uh, on trees or bare root shrubs or plants and also leaving wire cages on. So. I'm not telling you which method is better, I'm telling you what I tend to do, and that is remove both. Now, if you're gonna go the route of removing both the cage and the burlap, you have to be really, really careful when you're planting anything ball and burlap because you don't want to disturb that root ball. If you drop the shrub or the tree into the hole too hard or drop it while transporting it to the hole and the root ball breaks, um, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt because that plant may not survive. And so that's something extra that you just have to take into account. It can make planting the tree a little more difficult, um, but I prefer removing the burlap and the cage, and that's what I did on this tree, and it was a beast to do. But I think it'll be worth it in the end. So I dug the hole, and then I put some biotone and some land and sea compost, which I was able to pick up from Grandma's garden. So if you're local, and looking for land and sea compost. They do have it. I bought like five bags and used uh, two, 
two of them on this tree planting. Most of it on the top is kind of a mulch uh, because I don't want to incorporate a ton of like more moisture holding um, material into the hole because it was it was not holding water. It was draining sufficiently. It was a little slow, um, but the dogwood should kind of like that anyways. So overall, I think it's just going to look really nice in this space. And let me take you up here to the patio and show you kind of what I wanted it for as well. I think it's going to provide um, some nice privacy this way as well, at least until the green giants uh, get grown. So it'll kind of cascade when it grows up over this fountain and you can kind of see better how far it is away from the house here. Uh, and there were a lot of people concerned about blocking these windows and I think I've mentioned on some previous comments that these windows are western facing and so we pretty much have the blinds closed anyway during the summer to block some of that heat. I did move the black lace elderberry to the corner of the fence uh, last week uh, and I did not get that on video either. It was just kind of a quick project to pull up the plant and transplant it because it rained all this past week and I wanted to get it in the ground so that it could um, get settled in with all that moisture. And so it's gone here in the corner of the fence. These do get really, really large and I know that. Uh, for some reason, they just kind of grow kind of really slow around here. So it'll take it a while, I think, but it'll be a really nice texture and color next to these golden privet, uh, golden ticket privet, and these barberries that I planted uh, last fall. I had someone mention um, last year when I planted these that I probably shouldn't have planted them because they're invasive. And I think they can't be sold potentially in Indiana, uh, but Proven Winner's line of bar barberries are, um, they don't reseed and they're not invasive in that manner. So, and so I try to not plant stuff in my garden that's invasive anyway, but if you need a barberry um, and you're having issues with them being invasive in your garden, the Proven Winners lines tend to not be anyway. So I've never seen those be invasive around here. Honeysuckle is the biggest issue we have around here with invasiveness. So um, just a thought there if you need a barberry because they are really pretty plants and there's a lot of color options. Uh, they do have thorns though, so you got to remember that. The roses that I planted in the last video or a couple videos ago are putting on a ton of new growth already. They look really, really nice. Uh, and so I am actually probably going to come out here this week and give them a good feeding of some uh, fertilizer that I did a lot of research on a couple years ago that I've been fertilizing the roses in my garden with. It's not an organic fertilizer, which I tend to prefer. Uh, but it does have uh, seaweed and a lot of organic uh, aspects to it. And so that's really the only non-organic fertilizer that I put in my garden. But apparently it's renowned in uh, the UK for how well it works on roses. And so I'll show you that. It is not cheap, uh, but I bought a bucket of it that will probably last me my entire lifetime because you just need like literally a tablespoon uh, for like a gallon or two of water. So it doesn't take much in the most... My most favorite thing about it is that it smells like the ocean. Uh, it reminds me of being on the beach in Florida whenever I mix it up and put it in a container. So I'll show you that in a coming video. Um, I'm not going to break it out today because I'm literally exhausted. I don't know about you, but when the gardening season kicks off and big tasks like planting this tree, uh, it just zaps me really quickly. Just being in the sun, even though the temperatures, it's only 60 today outside, but it's just kind of rough after I've been laying around just seed starting for the past few months. Getting going in the spring is difficult and I try and take, you know, lots of breaks and um, work short bursts at a time until I can get the project completed. But I just wanted to show you those things in the garden today. I haven't got anything else planted. I've still got my uh, green giants that I purchased from uh, Natorps the other day and then my peony and baptisia. I did get scheduled a time when they're going to come trench to move my irrigation line over and trench for electrical to the shed and so that's going to be in about um, the 22nd or the 23rd I think is what we decided on. So I've got to come out here basically and edge this bed and get an idea of where it's going to be um, before that happens and so it's supposed to rain this coming week a lot but if it's not raining in the afternoon. I may come out here and do a little work in the garden, even though it'll be muddy and messy. Um, 
just to get some stuff done because April around here, I don't know if it's that way where you're at, but our Aprils can be very wet. A few years ago, it rained every day in April, nearly all day, except for like three days of the month. I don't mind the rain in the spring. It gives everything an extra boost, but when you're out here and wanting to get stuff prepared um, to get the garden season going, it can be a little, a little bad for, you know, getting that stuff completed. So thank you guys for joining me. I just wanted to provide you a quick little update on the dogwood. I didn't record it being uh, planted, obviously, because it was, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> it just wasn't pretty. So uh, take care and remember in a world full of hate, be a light. Bye everyone.